Hi, I'm Matt Pomeroy. You can find me at PhysEd Pomeroy on Twitter. I'm going to talk to you today about Google Forms, and I'm blogging for at PhysEdagogy. Uh, we just like to talk about best practices in PE and definitely collecting formative and summative assessment data and just information on your students are definitely a best practice in PE. So, you know, you see that the teacher just needs more information about the students. I don't really like calling it data. I like talking about information because I think it's really important that we use information and not always data. Hey, the teacher gets a really bright idea. All right, the teacher creates a Google Form. You can see with one click of a button, the teacher sends out a Google Form to all of their students. And I do like using this in small groups. You can see I've got six iPads in my class, so it's easy to kind of rotate through stations sometimes when I'm looking to collect some data too. All right, student or parent or client or whatever fills out that Google Form that teacher collects all that information. It's um, collected by a Google Form and then it's submitted into what's called the Google Sheet. Uh, information on a Google Sheet is, is saved in your Google Drive. And again, when things are on Google Drive, you can access them from your phone, your tablet, the computer, whatever. And again, thanks Google Forms. Awesome stuff, easy way to collect, time-saving kind of things. But again, I think the key thing here is that the students are gonna win because teacher cares about them. Um, they're going to see that, you know, you're, you're there to help them. All right, let's look at Google Forms and just quickly look at how to set one up. All right, you can create a Google Form in Google Drive. You're going to go to drive.google.com or just enter in your domain and find, um, find it in your Google Drive. All right, you'll find a picture on the blog post about that too. Um, so putting the pieces together to build your Google Form, um, we're going to look at the most important information for creating Google Forms that are out there right now. All right, one of the main things I use is text boxes. Text boxes, you know, you're going to collect short data, um, like student names, email, etc. cetera. Um, plan your accordingly, you know, for how you want your responses to look. I always think of it as how the responses come in. So I use like a last name in one text box and a first name in another. So I can sort by the last name and then I can even sort by the hour and, and so far. Um, so if you're thinking about the sort features, it's what makes Google Forms powerful. You can easily sort it and it doesn't take very long to process your data then. Um, I also use for like autocrat kind of stuff too and that's kind of a deluxe add-on that we'll talk about at another point in time. I have paragraph text I use quite a bit. Um, I use it just to collect anything longer than just regular text data. I use it more for like journaling, answering thought-provoking questions, um, you know those kind of things. And this is a response that can be graded by you but it can't be graded by like Google Forms or a script called Flubberoo. Um, but usually you're going to get some awesome information here. So paragraph texts are great to have out there. Uh, check boxes is another kind of like feature you can use. Um, a great way to collect data that you can get a lot of different options on. So basically students could check as many of the check boxes as they want. Um, and again, the responses are great because you can see how many people like responded and what percentage of the respondents was. I right, choose from a list, kind of like a multiple choice question, but again, you can see the, the box on the left hand side. You know, you, when you click on that box, a couple of different choices will pop out. In this example, it was a, a one to a five and they were creating their, their peers on, uh, on speedball um, form skills. Um, again, there's no other feature like there is in, in multiple choice questions um, and even the checkbox questions. So again, this is, you've got to be pretty specific. I really like choose from a list, um, and again, multiple choice could be used too, but using teachers' names, um, whether it's uh, their homeroom teacher, or I have hours, so I have a lot of my um, forms sorted by hours and that kind of stuff too. So again, multiple choice, it's one of the most popular selections. Uh, you've all kind of seen multiple choice questions out there. Um, but again, you're going to get a nice little pie chart you can see on the right-hand side there, um, and you get that same pie chart if you use the choose from a list. Um, but on the left hand side you can see like they can see their selections in the multiple choice instead of having to click on that box and again it also gives you that other options where students can type in their own choice too. Again here's just another example of like a choose from a list. Um, I've got just a short quiz and then you can kind of see the respondents. The best part about seeing these responses are the fact that you can change your teaching then real quickly and you can start to analyze what's happening. All right. Um, again, this is great for sorting. Um, 
our grade, teacher group, all those different things, um, using choose from a list is, is great. All right, again, these are just some of the choices that I had for Celebration Day, and boom, I mean, there's just a ton of different choices, but um, I, re I really made a mistake on this because 500 kids were filling it out, and I didn't have, like, their homeroom teacher in one of the choices. They just filled it in, and I couldn't sort properly because of that, and it made it really difficult. So sometimes we learn from our mistakes, and I'm, I make sure to always have that as an option now. So just throwing that out there for you. All right, scale again, a lot of us use this. It's kind of like great for rubrics. You can choose between like zero and 10, and which easily assigns points for each skill or whatever it is that you're grading. Um, again, you can easily see on the right-hand side where you need to focus, and maybe you can go back and look at what students you need to focus on for the upcoming lessons, but it can really change your teaching. Uh, grid, again, this looks a little bit more like a rubric. I use this more for like my health ed classes, but you've got like everything that you're graded on on the left-hand side, your rubric, and then uh, on the one to five scale. Uh, but again, it can, it's just kind of an easy way to sort. And this is kind of how your information comes back. Um, and again, this is how you end up seeing your information. You can really see where kids struggled or where they did really well too. So again, nice, easy way to just collect some information. There's a nice one out there called a section header and it just makes your forms look a little nicer. So you can see sometimes I add in you know, the bigger text and the fonts and it just breaks it up a little bit. You can add some page breaks and those kind of things. This is page one and I only want them to choose these things. Um, but again, if you've got a long test or long quizzes, it's kind of nice to, to, to break them into different pages. But sometimes you can say, as you look on the top one here, if you choose this, you can go to page two or three or four, so you can kind of break your form up. Um, Kind of like a choose your own adventure thing. So if you select something, it'll take you to different types of questions. So that's kind of a cool advanced um, form feature. All right, and you can just see now this is multiple different pages. Um, and that's just what I'm trying to show you there for page breaks. Um, that's just kind of the last page of those. Again, adding images are awesome. Uh, just a great way to add visuals for your students. It's very simple to add them into Google Forms. Just select add image. Find your image from your computer and select it. On the left is just part of my SLO quiz um, where they're just selecting muscles um, using a Google form and using some um, choose from a list responses. And then the picture on the right is from Joey Fife. Give him credit for that. Um, it's up on his website where he's talking about how you could use it um, as, again, an assessment during a class period. But it's a great visual, and, and students definitely like seeing those things. Again, you could use YouTube videos um, or clips. Um, you can search through YouTube, or you can cut, like paste the URL of a video that you want to use. Um, so again, you're just going to add item, you're going to add a video, and then this is just where you can choose either a video search or a URL. Um, and again, what's awesome about that is the fact that you can assign homework, you know, maybe flip a lesson through a video, have them watch it at home, have them answer some questions about the video, um, and then you've known that they've watched it based upon their answers or responses. Um, and again, just kind of a nice other option out there. The second option for video could be, um, you know, where you actually have situations in a game and you're trying to kind of like judge their game sense and those kind of things. So they could watch the video on it um, and then they can respond to the specific video. So that's it. Now you got to find out a way to share your Google form um, with whether it's students, parents, staff, uh, clients, anyone else you want to share these forms with. Again, you can kind of email the link to your live form. So you're going to click on view your live form. And again, once you click on that, it's going to bring you to a page that looks like this. This is your live form that um, whoever you want to have will have it. And again, it's based upon that, that shareable link up there. And that's what you would end up copying and pasting and sending in an email. All right, you can also post your link to like a learning management system in LMS. This is Skyward. I just put a couple of uh, tests on here where it just said PE test. They can click on it. Um, and again, once they click on it, it brings up a space where I put in there um, the link, and then they just easily click on that. So it's just another place for them to find it. Again, I could post it in Google Classroom and that type of stuff too. Again, your last option is to embed it into a website. So I'm going to click Insert. I'm going to choose Drive. I'm going to choose Form. All right, and then that's going to take my form, and that's going to insert it right into my website. 
So cool. I mean, that's it on Google Forms. That's easy ways to create them. Next video coming up um, will be posted soon. And it's just going to be now that you've got and now that you've practiced creating Google Forms, we're going to give you 10 or more different ideas on how to uh, start implementing more Google Forms and collecting more information from your students. Um, so that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. Again, uh, you can find me on Twitter at PhysEdPomeroy.